Hello, Rose Hill family. Greetings, greetings. We're so excited that you're here. Listen, we've got about 15 minutes until our service starts, but I know that you're going to be blessed. So thank you for tuning in early, and we'll keep you updated as to how long we have before service starts. God bless you.
Hey, Rosehill family, thank you so much for your patience. Listen, we're only 10 minutes away from worship, so get ready. Hello, family. I feel like Bishop T.D. Jakes this morning. Get ready, get ready, get ready. It's almost worship time. Our worship will begin in five minutes.
Yeah, you're a man of your word. Yeah, listen. All things are possible when we believe. All chains are breakable when we receive your way. You keep your promises. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, if you said it, we believe it. All things are possible when we believe all chains are breakable when we receive your way you keep your promises if you said it
the great I am said he speaks over me Hey, family and friends, I'm back again. Listen, I want to first of all welcome every person who's viewing us tonight. And I also want to especially welcome our first time viewers. Like we always ask you to do, if you're a first time viewer, put it in the comment section so we can show you some love. And I want to take a moment and raise our offering. I want you to know that worship is also done through giving. Giving is worship. And so don't ever separate the two. So as we take a moment to worship God through our giving, I want you to prepare your gifts. And giving is so important because it teaches us so many things. Listen, tithing teaches organization. Sometimes we struggle with our financial uh, well-being because we don't first start with tithing. Tithing really teaches us how to manage our money and how to put first things first and subsequent things next. And so listen, don't discount tithing, don't discount giving. It's a wonderful practice that will revolutionize your life. And so at this moment, take a moment, uh, grab your cell phones. If you give via your cell phone, it's really easy. We use this short code. All you have to do in the little two line is simply type 84321. And then right down in the message box, just put the dollar sign and the amount that you want to give, press send, and it comes right to us or it'll send back a message to you if this is your first time so you can put in your banking information and from that point on you'll never have to do that again it's just that simple then of course you can go to our website our website is easy rosehillchurch.org go to online giving it's going to pull up all the information for you and you can simply type it in and send it over to us or of course you can simply mail your gift in and one of the things that we've been doing too is uh, during our service or after our service, we'll send out a link to all of you who are connected to us via text uh, messages and we'll give you the link to make it very easy for you. Our goal is to make giving easy. So listen family, God bless you. Thank you for your giving. We appreciate your support so much. So now I want you to prepare your hearts for the word because I believe it's gonna change your life. Enjoy this next selection and I'll be right back. a second or another minute, not an hour or another day, but at this moment with my arms outstretched, I need you to make a way as you have done so many times before. A window or an open door I stretch my hands to thee come rescue me I need you right away I need you now I need you now Not another minute, not an hour or another day, but Lord, I need you right away. If I ever needed you before to show up and restore all of the faith that I let slip while I was yet searching the world 
For more the truest friend I have indeed You're my best friend I know indeed I stretch my hands to thee Come rescue me I need you right away The agony of being alone Fear and doing things on my own The test and trial they come to make me strong The feeling of guilt, hurt, shame trials that beat upon me but to know Lord that in you I've got victory yeah. I need you now Lord I need you now I need you right now right now right now I need you second, not another minute, not an hour, another day, but Lord, 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 I need you, need you, need you, need you, oh Lord, I need you, right away. Anybody need the Lord? Oh, I need the Lord right away. For it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. <clears throat> to one he gave five talents, to another two and to another one, each according to his own ability. And he went on his journey. Tonight, family, I want to speak to you from the subject, first things first. That's right, first things first. I think the first thing that we need to comprehend if we're going to have great marriages or a great life in general is that life is not fair. God is not fair. God is just. Think about this. Fair would suggest that we all start out with the same things, but we don't. This particular Matthean text bears me out. It says each man got something different. Just would imply that each man got what he was capable of handling at the time and what was necessary for his journey. So God is just, he is not fair. However, what I must point out is what each man got was significant. It was more than enough. It was what they needed to do or what they needed to have to do what God had called them to do. What really makes a difference, family, is not so much what I have, but what I do with what I have. In other words, what I do with what God has given me. And as we delve into this text tonight, I want to invite you, I want to beseech you to look at your life and say, what have I done with what God has given me? It's the investments that we make that will eventually pay off. And one of the greatest investments you can make is in your family. And one of the greatest gifts you can give your family or invest in your family is the investment of your time. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to John chapter 9, verses 4 and 5. I want you to see something. Now, Jesus says this. Jesus says, we must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. 
Night is coming when no man can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now look at this with me, family. Jesus makes three powerful points in this text that we're going to explore as the basis of our discussion for tonight. The first thing that he says is, I must prioritize my time. Well, some of you are saying, where did he say that at? When he said, we must work the works of him who sent me. In other words, Jesus says, I must prioritize my time so I can do what God has sent me here to do. Number two, he says, I have limited time. He says, night is coming when no man can work. Jesus knew that he had a limited window of opportunity that he had to take advantage of. Jesus knew that he only had three years to revolutionize the world. And the heavy question is, what are we doing with our window of opportunity? And then finally, Jesus says this. He says, I am an agent of change. He says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Think about this, family. Whenever a light is turned on in a dark room, it changes the environment drastically. And as believers, we ought to do the same. We should make a kingdom impact everywhere we go, but starting with our families. Sometimes we try to make impacts outside of our family without first affecting our family. It first starts with the family, then spreads abroad. How have you impacted your family first? Remember, first things first. Let's go back to the first point, prioritizing time. Jesus says, be picky with your most prized possession. So many people think that money is our most prized possession, but it isn't. Now, Money is important, so don't go around saying money isn't important. Money is important because it buys those things that we need and those things that we want. Money pays for your utilities. It pays for water in your house. It pays for gas in your car. It pays for a car and the house that you live in. So it is important, but it's not your most valuable asset. Why? It's simple. Because you can always get more money. You can lose all of your money and get it all back and then some. But that's not true with your time. You only have a limited amount of time and you cannot get more of it. Therefore, it makes time the most precious asset. Now, I want to go deeper. The self-help industry has made billions of dollars on what they call time management tools. Now, I fully understand, family, what they're saying when they say time management. But I want to open your eyes tonight and help you to understand some things. And the first thing that you and I have to understand is we cannot manage time. No, everybody has the same amount of time. Everybody has 24 hours in a day. We all have 168 hours a week. We all have seven days in a week. We all have 365 days. The real question is, what am I doing with the time that I have? So in actuality, what we're really doing is managing activities as they relate to time. And if you think about it that way, it'll change the way you see time. It's not just about time, but it's about the activities that I do within the time that I've been given. If time is your greatest gift and most precious asset, then what are you doing with your time? If time is your greatest gift, how do you make sure that you're spending it wisely? How do I make sure that I'm using it productively? Well, it goes back to the first point that Jesus made. And what's that? Prioritizing. I have to learn to prioritize. Well, how do I prioritize my time? And how do I prioritize my activities better yet? I first must realize this important fact, that everything cannot be important. Let me say that again. Everything cannot be important. My pastor, Dr. Ari Vernon, taught me this. He says, if everything is important, then nothing's important. In other words, if you put the same weight on everything, 
then everything has equal meaning in your life. I had to come to the conclusion, and you have to come to the conclusion, that some things are weightier and more important than other things. Well, how do I manage my activities understanding this, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Watch this. I found this book called First Things First, and in it there was a time quadrant that really correlated nicely with the text. And it talks about the different types of times and urgencies that we have in life. And it teaches us how to categorize our time and our activities. The first category I want you to consider is things that are urgent and important. Jesus says doing the work of the Father is urgent and it's important. So it would belong in the first category. Watch this. Things that are urgent and important are those things that you deem critical, those things that you deem important, those things that you deem urgent. There are things that must be done right away, and they are activities that deserve your time. These are activities that nobody else can do as effectively or as efficiently as you can. Therefore, they're deserving of your time. Well, what are some of these activities? Well, you have to formulate your own list. But might I make some suggestions to you? The first thing that I think is urgent and important and we should do daily is spending quality time with God. Watch this. No one else can build your relationship with God. Depending on someone else to build your relationship with God is like depending on somebody else to do your push-ups and you deriving the benefits from their doing your push-ups. It's just not possible. I'm your pastor. I'm here to help grow your relationship with God, but I cannot build your relationship with God. That's something that you have to do yourself. Now, let me give you a heavy statement. Here it is. What and who you become intimate with will ultimately shape you and determine who you become. I think that's worth repeating. What and who you become intimate with will ultimately shape you and determine who you become. That's why spending time with God is vitally important. Yes, if you spend intimate time with him, he will shape you. And here's a heavy question. Who else would you want to shape you besides God? So I want to caution you. Be cautious, be careful who you spend intimate time with or what you spend intimate time with in terms of programming, social media, all these things, because who or what you spend intimate time with will ultimately shape you. Why not let God shape you? Why not let God put you back on the wheel and make you again another vessel that seems good for him to make? Because all of us are flawed. All of us have cracks that only God can mend and repair. And it all starts out by spending quality time with God. Ephesians 5 and 1 says, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. There will be no imitation without intimacy. It starts with intimacy with God. And everything in our life ought to be subsequent to our relationship and spending time with God. In other words, everything ought to flow out of spending time with God. If everything flows out of spending time with God, we'll be great at the other things that follow because we got what we needed initially. The next thing I want to talk to you about is this. This is how I'm prioritizing my life. I know at different times they move around, but watch this. I got to spend quality time with my spouse. You've got to spend quality time with your spouse. It is the quality time, the revelatory and intimate conversations that lets your spouse into your life. How do you let your spouse into your life? Through conversation, through communing. Yeah, through talking, through telling them what's been revealed to you by speaking to them intimately. 
It's when y'all spend time communicating on meaningful levels, like I talked about last week, that increases your intimacy. It's not just providing for. It's not just cooking for. It's not just performing various acts alone. It's about going after a deeper connection and pulling out of each other things that neither of you knew were in you. In other words, I got to get to a place in space where I can see into my spouse to the point where I can begin to pull things out of her that she didn't even know she had. And she can pull things out of me that I didn't even know I had. It's about supporting each other. It's about helping each other to become who God desires for us to be individually and corporately as a couple. It's about growing together. It's about learning to appreciate each other's differences, and it's about enjoying the journey. If I had time, I would pause right there. So many of us are waiting to get to a particular destination that we're not even enjoying the journey together. We're not taking any time to smell the roses. We're not sitting around and enjoying our kids growing up. And before we know it, it's all over, and we've missed the journey, and we didn't understand that the journey was the most important thing. Raising the kids, enjoying them growing up was the most important thing. Uh, uh, embracing our marriage as they grew up, it was the most important thing. And then you get to this point in life and you realize, I miss life waiting on life. Oh, that's so good. Come here, somebody. Watch this. The next thing I, I think ought to be on everybody's list, you got to make your own list, is spending quality time with your kids. For a child, time equates to love. For a child, time equals love. When you spend time with your kids, it makes them feel loved. It makes them feel like they're worthy of your time. Our kids should not see us talking on the phone to other people and talking to other people and spending more time on social media and all the other distractions than we spend with them. If I told your kid to imitate you, They should never grab their phone and walk around like this and say, this is what my daddy does. This is what my mama does. This is how my mama is all the time. If your kids had to imitate you, what would that look like? Oh, it's a heavy question. Next, watch this. It gives us an opportunity to allow God to work through us to mold our children. It's our job as parents to mold our children, to straighten the sapling before it gets too hard and becomes too rigid and has to remain bent. We got to make sure that they're straight. It's our job to mold them. It's our job to teach them to get along with to get along with God. It's our job to teach them how to pray. It's our job to teach them about the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's our job to tell them to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your path. It's our job to tell them that the Holy Spirit wants to lead you and guide you and help you through every circumstance and situation in your life. Listen, I thank God for my upbringing. My parents taught me about Jesus at a young age. I remember walking up to to, to home plate with a bat in my hand, putting the bat down, getting ready to hit a ball, saying, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. That strengthens me. I'm quoting scripture at the plate. I remember being in the backfield saying, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. It's what my parents taught me that changed my life. Now, I'll tell you something. If you don't mold them, there are people waiting to do so. If you don't mold them, your television will. If you don't mold them, social media will gladly mold them. If you don't mold them, their little friends will mold them. They'll they'll begin to tell them about sex and things that they don't even understand themselves and begin to mold your kids. If you don't mold them, Netflix will. If you don't mold them, YouTube will. If you don't mold them, there are multiplicity, uh, uh, different people, things that are waiting to mold your children. So watch this. Speak into their lives. Speak over them. Hang out with them. Play with them. Show up at their events and their games. Watch this. Pray for them. When your kids get sick, put your hands on them and pray for them. Let them see you pray for them. My kids know, my kids tell me, Daddy, I'm not feeling well. First thing I'm going to do is come here. Let me put my hands on you. 
They know it. And then after a while, they'll say, Dad, I feel better. I, I say, prayer works. And sometimes they'll tell me I'll be gone so much. Dad, I'm not feeling good. I'll pray for them. I call them back. How are you feeling? They say, I'm better. I say, prayer works. That's God did that. God did that. I want you to know who did that. God did that. Your daddy had enough faith to pray to God, and God touched your body and healed you. I want you to know that God is able so that when daddy is gone, you can function in this world. When mama is gone, you can function in this world. My wife praying over those kids, they need to see that. Can I go deeper, family? Oh, you're going to get me started. Watch this. In your career, can I help you in your career? You've got to have a career, but I don't, I, don't think, I don't think you can put your career above your relationship with God. I know you can't. You can't put your career above your relationship with your spouse or your kids. And watch this. But let me help you in your career. To really help you, I have to do a seminar, but let me give you a few, a few pointers. Stop trying to do everything. Do those things that only you can do. And build a team and let other people do what you can't. Watch this. You will only be as strong as the team you build. No one is self-made. Stop letting people uh, give you that. Stop letting people speak that into your life. Nobody is self-made. Everybody had help along the way. And if God gave you a vision, he'll also give you a team. Oftentimes, he won't give you the team until you make it to a point where you need the team. So don't wait to get started, but he will give you a team. But if you insist on doing everything yourself, your business, your department, or whatever you're over will only grow to a certain extent. Watch this. If it is truly to be effective, the thing that you're over needs to outgrow you. What does that mean? It needs to get to a point where it can do things that's greater than your ability alone. You got that? Now watch this. You got to learn to have oversight of the people that God has given insight to. So you got to learn how to have oversight while the people who are working have the insight. You may not have every insight, but you just got to know how to have oversight. Come to my seminar when I teach it. Watch this. The next thing I want to talk about for a moment is those things that are important but not urgent. It means that these things are things that are definitely important, but they don't necessarily need to be done right now. That means that these things require planning. Watch this, family. Planning. They're important, but they're not urgent. They don't have to be completed right now, and so I plan for them. Funding my kids' college. I plan for it, put a plan together, execute the plan over time. When it's time for them to go to college, they have it. Retirement, same thing. Put a plan together, execute the plan over time. When I retire, I have it. Big events like seminars and conferences, plan for them, execute the plan over time, and we're ready. All of those things need planning. Then there's another category called not important but urgent. Now, now I want to caution you. These things are important, but what it really means is They don't require my hands. Watch this. Those things that are important require my hands. But but those things that I say are not important but urgent, they need to be done, but I don't necessarily have to do them, which means I delegate those things. Watch this. Our TV broadcasts, radio, streaming, graphics, all that stuff is important to me. But I don't touch it. I don't touch it. I don't have to physically do it. I delegate that to people who have insight And all I need is the oversight. Got it? And and so many of us are afraid to delegate because we're afraid that somebody is going to shine brighter than us. If you have that mindset, you'll never take your organization, your business, your whatever to the next level. Because if you're afraid to let other people shine, then you're going to miss out on what God has for you. Watch this. One of the things I had to come to a conclusion was, Uh, Cutting my grass, having my grass cut is important to me, but I found out that it wasn't that important if I did it or somebody else. And I reached a point in my life where I got so busy, my wife said, you got to stop cutting that grass, taking three hours a week cutting that grass, coming in and sniffing and sneezing and all of that stuff. And I love cutting my grass. I did. I still like to cut grass. 
But I got to a point where I realized, you know what, I'm going to have to outsource this. Gave it to these guys. These two or three guys come in and do in 30 minutes or less what I, it took me three hours to do. Then I could take that three hours and invest it in my family in different things that were important. And if you take three hours a week, if I can gain three hours a week, that's 12 hours that I've gained that I could do something else with. What is it that you could cut out or delegate that will cause you to get more time that you could put it towards more meaningful pursuits? Oh, if I had time. Watch this. I got about four minutes. And then there are those things that are not important and they're not urgent. Not important and not urgent. Well, Pastor, what do I do with those things? Eliminate them. Eliminate them. How much time am I spending on things that are not important and not urgent? That's consuming your time. How much time am I spending on things that need to be delegated? That's consuming your time. I need to be putting my time toward pursuits that only I can perform effectively and efficiently. And as I close, how are you spending your most precious asset? Are you investing it wisely? Are you investing it in the right people? Are you using it in a manner that's pleasing to God? Or are you spending all your time on social media and other things that bring small or no returns? And as I close tonight, I want you to think about this. We all have to put those phones down and invest our time in people and pursuits that matter. After all, it's not what we've been given that matters so much, but it's what we do with what we've been given. Watch this. One day Jesus is coming back and we'll have to give an account for how we handled everything that he gave to us. He's the man that's going on a journey and is coming back to check on our stewardship. So why not take advantage of this opportunity, this window, this time that God has given us? Because after all, night is coming and no man can work. So as I close tonight, do your work before night comes and no man can work. As I close tonight, if you have not given your life to God, I'm telling you, without God, I have no life. He is the source of life. And if you're feeling lifeless, it may be an indication that you don't have him, but tonight you can have him. All you have to do is simply say, God, I've fallen short of your glory. Tonight, come into my heart, be Lord of my life. I know Jesus died in my place and that you raised him from the dead. And tonight I make you Lord of my life. According to your word, with the belief in my heart and the confession of my mouth, I am saved. If you want to rededicate your life tonight, you can do that. If you need to come back home, you realize, you know what? I've kind of drifted away, and I want to put my anchor in a solid rock. That rock is Jesus Christ. And number three, if you want to join our church, wherever you are in the world, you can do that tonight. Simply go on our social media, go to our website, rosehillchurch.org, hit the Contact Us button, fill out all the information, we'll contact you and we'll walk you through the process. Go to our Facebook page or any of our social media, direct message us, inbox us, let us know you want to be saved, let us know that you want to rededicate your life, let us know that you want to join our church, and we'll be happy to lead you in any one of those pursuits. Listen, family, we love you so much. We thank God for you. On behalf of Lady Shorman, myself, the entire Rose Hill family, we love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Have a fantastic night. Listen, I can't wait to preach to you on Sunday. I've got a word. I'm going to finish up my relationship series, and you don't want to miss this. Grab your family. Grab your friends. Grab your spouse. Get around the TV and watch this word. It'll bless your life. Good night. Love y'all.